Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So I'm Jakub Novosad. I'm an assistant professor at Adam Mickiewicz University in Poznań, Poland. Um, and in my work, I do mostly that. So I work using R, I work with raster data, and I'm obsessed with spatial patterns. So I thought that this is a perfect combination for this kind of a conference, and um, that kind of a topic would force me to just spend some time just reading papers and trying to see what's the state, the current state of, of, of this um, topic is. And just to start with definition, maybe not the best way to start, but at least we have an animation. Um, by spatial patterns, it's defined as a scale dependent, so we have patterns in different scales. Uh, it's physical arrangement, so we arrange something in some order, and it's predictable. So there is an idea, idea that it's not random, there is something there that we can, we can predict. So you can see that already, you see that the spatial patterns, they have some properties that we hope to capture, because they, they matter. Um, and there are several reasons, several basic reasons to do that. So uh, Long and Robertson, they, they, they state that we can study change. So we have time A, time B, and I want to see if there is a change in spatial pattern that happened from the time A to time B. But we can also study similarity. We have location A and location B, and we want to see if those two locations are similar to each other or different. Then we can study association. So then we can think of variables. We have variable A, variable B, and we try to see if they are similar. And Another, uh, maybe a little bit different uh, idea is the assessment of spatial models. So we have our uh, outcome variable, we have our predictors, and we want to maybe assess our model, we want to compare them, and so on. And because of this uh, uh, topology, we also can think of different operations. So we can think about comparing the same variables, but for different areas, we can compare different data sets or uh, different sense or different variables, or we can just uh, see the same area but at different times. So the whole idea of, of my talk and the, uh, the paper that was mentioned before was to just provide an overview of our packages to compare spatial patterns, just focusing on rasters, because Probably it would be much too, uh, too, 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 too much to, to say if we go to other types of data. Um, but to do that, I needed first to take a step back, and I started by looking at methods for comparing spatial patterns. So in the paper, you can you can read about more than the st more than more than the things I will show you in the next uh, few slides. So. Let's look at some example data that, we, that, that will be shown uh, during the presentation. So here we have two main types of raster data. So at the top, you have continuous raster data. This is an NDVI values. And to show you uh, the variability of those methods, I, I use data from the same place but different times. So we have uh, NDVI from 2018 for TARTU, NDVI from 2023 for, for TARTU, and you have NDVI for 2023, but for different location. So from city of Poznan, where I'm based in. And at the bottom, we have a similar situation, but with categorical data. So we have uh, land cover data, so data with, uh, here we have seven different land cover categories. And you can see also that we have the same location for different times. So we have TARTU in 2000 and 2018, and then we have POSNAN in 2018. And those, those data sets, I, will really, I, I believe they will show us uh, the, the differences and similarities between those methods. So when we go to those, uh, the core of, of my talk, so to the methods, the first method probably that we already, I hope that some of you already done, it's a visual inspection. We look at the data and we try to 
think about the differences. We look at the data on the top and on the bottom, and you can see that the, 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 the map on the top, the colors are darker, so the, there are higher NDVI values. We already see, um, especially maybe the uh, southeast part or maybe uh, northeast part, which is totally different from the, the same place in 2023. Similarly, we can see that on categorical rasters, when you can see that there is a visible urban growth uh, between 2000 and 2010 for that. So, human vision is great. We, because we, at the same time, we can see different dimensions, different changes, uh, different aspects of, the, of, of what we can observe. But of course, there is a one, a uh, really huge problem that we are subjective. So probably if I would ask all of you to give me a number between zero and 10, how similar they are, I will give different numbers. And I know that because I've done those kind of studies before. I ask a group of 50 students about that and I've got values from, from zero to 10 for some cases. So that's, that's very problematic because we cannot reproduce, we cannot have a stable um, values at the end. And of course, another thing is that it can be time consuming. So if we need to go to hundreds of thousands of data sets, it's probably not, not doable with just a visual inspection. So we, when we also think about the methods, we also need to think about several dimensions. Um, and I mentioned one dimension at the, at the, at the beginning, so the data type. So data type here, I'm sorry, talking about continuous and categorical, but we also can think about data models. So we can think about comparing points and uh, polygons and lines. I'm focusing on raster. Then we can think about data types. So there will be, a different, there will be different methods for continuous and categorical rasters. Then we also need, need to think about what's the outcome of our comparison. And here you can see that I, thought about maybe three basic outcomes that we can have. So one outcome, uh, probably the, the, the nicest uh, visually, is the raster outcome. So we compare uh, uh, TAR2 in 2018, 2023, and at the end we've got a map. So this is the raster outcome uh, of, of our comparison. Second option is the single value outcome. So we compare the same area, let's say, and at the end we get, we, we get one value. And this one value describes the, how those uh, patterns uh, compare to each other. And the, the last uh, option is to have multiple value outcome. So we've got a series of values describing the, the change, Pro hopefully less values than the, we have cells in our rasters. Third dimension is the context. So uh, by context, I mean, do we include information about spatial relationship? or not. Because, for example, if we just uh, may, uh, calculate the, the, like on the left, NDVI change, so basically I take the data for one year and subtract that from the data from the other year. So basically it's just calculation, each cell is calculated independently, so there is no spatial context included. So this is the non-spatial part. But on the right you have, uh, you have a measure of spatial correlation of the differences. So then you are actually looking at the neighborhoods and you are including the spatial context in your results. And the last dimension is, can we compare these joint areas? So for some methods, you can only use them if you have data for the same area. But some methods that I called disjoint methods, they also work and we can compare, for example, uh, Tart with Poznan. And now, maybe let's go and see what we have here. So the most, probably the most basic ideas uh, are here. So this is the, those are the ideas when we have the raster outcome. So at the end of our calculation, we still have a raster. And for, uh, for continuous rasters, it's basically the, the difference between one uh, moment in time and the other. So you can see that on the top right corner when we have the change in NDVI and we can basically see that there is, there is a decrease, so the values uh, in the second 
uh, moment in time are lower than the first. And, but for categorical data, we cannot do that. We cannot um, subtract cat uh, land cover categories. There are a few things we can do. One, probably the ba most basic thing is just to calculate the binary difference. So if there is a difference or not between uh, those two dates, and you can see that actually the, the, the differences are not um, clamped in one area, but uh, spread it all over the, uh, the, the study area, which is probably some kind of information that we can uh, maybe use some, uh, for some purposes. Then, if we think about uh, adding the spatial context, but we are still wanting, wanting to have the raster outcome, we can use other methods. So here I'm showing you three methods. Uh, you already seen the first one, so basically we just calculate the differences and then we are calculating the um, spatial correlation of, of those, so like I Moran and similar. And then we can see areas with the uh, clamped changes. Um, we can also calculate correlation coefficient using moving window. So we are basically, there is a moving window that calculates the differences and it also highlights which areas uh, in that moving window uh, are uh, changed the most and which, uh, so which are correlated the most and which are correlated less. So you can see that basically the, when the correlation is lower than zero, it basically means the, the change, the difference. So the, the violet areas in the middle are basically the areas of change. And, but we also can do much more. So we can calculate the different metrics on uh, our data. So for the first moment in time, for the second. Uh, one idea is to calculate uh, just uh, uh, different uh, methods using uh, concurrence matrices uh, like homogeneity and entropy and so on. Those methods also uh, are using uh, uh, moving windows. And then we basically just calculate the difference between the moment for the, for the metric for the one year uh, from the metric from the other year. And you can see that this gives us slightly different uh, story. And, and I think this is probably one of the, this is maybe a spoiler alert, but this is the, probably one of the main outcome what I wanted to show you that usually those methods will give us slightly different stories. So that was where from uh, continuous. Now let's go back to categorical rasters. So for categorical rasters, we can do something similar. Uh, on the, you can see that on the left. So we can calculate some landscape metric for the, for the first uh, moment in time. We can calculate that in a, in a moving window for the second moment in time. And then we can calculate the difference. And you can see which areas changed in terms of this metric. So this is very important because you need to decide the metric. So you need to decide what's the properties of the landscape you are interested in or the change in the property, and then you can calculate that. We can also use some, some other measures like, like cross entropy. It also uses the moving window. So in this uh, spatial context, often uh, moving window is, is uh, one of the main approaches. So here we have a short summary of that. Uh, I mentioned that I also want to highlight R packages so you can have R packages that are implementing those methods that you can, you can use. And you can see also that on the, in the tables there are a few more methods that I'm showing on the slides. Um, so let's, let's maybe go to the next one, single value outcome. And I don't know if you noticed, but for the, um, for the raster outcome, we only looked at Tartu. Tartu in uh, 2000, 2018, or Tartu 2018 and 2023. Because that's, this is how, this is the, the, the probably the only way we can get a map as the result. But if you want to compare different areas, we cannot compare pixel by pixel or moving window to, to moving window. We need to do something different. So, so this is where we can use single value outcomes. So here you can see that um, uh, here we have for the first uh, example. This is for non uh, joint areas. So here we are still keeping the same area and we are just comparing them. So we can, we can use different methods and at the end you can see at the bottom we get one value. 
So for example, we get the proportion of changed pixels. So we know that the, uh, the pro that proportion is about uh, 0 0.5. We get the value of overall comparison. We can get some other measures like, like V measure, which also uh, calculates how similar two maps are to each other. But then, what, what can we do if we have different areas? So we have different methods. And of course, those methods are much broader because they can be used both for the same areas and also from, for the other areas. So what I've done here is basically I put TAR2 in the middle, so this TAR2 2023, and I compare that with TAR2 2018 on the left and, and uh, POS9 on the right. And you can see that several measures for example, I calculated the dissimilarity between distributions of values. So I just look at the distribution of values in, in TAR 2023 and compare that to the two other examples. I calculated uh, average roughness and then also compared that. Uh, I also calculated something which, is, which, which I, for the purpose of this talk I called uh, Gauss entropy. So also I got two numbers which I, which, I, which I compared the differences between. And which, which is, what is really interesting uh, here is that uh, in the NDVI in Poznań 2023 is more similar to TAR 2023 than to TAR, to TAR in the past. Which you can also see visually, I hope. But now try to do that for 1,000 areas or more. So, now, so let's think about categorical rasters. Let's, uh, let's uh, uh, look at that. So, so what we, we, we can do, we can, for example, calculate a landscape metric on the, for the whole landscape and also, the, again, calculate the difference. So I calculated the difference between uh, Sharn diversity uh, index with uh, edge density. I also use another entropy called Zao's entropy. And um, another idea is uh, to use the spatial signatures, so basically compress the spatial information and compare that using a dissimilarity measure. And you can see the values also at the bottom. And here, basically, we can see that uh, in most cases, uh, TAR2 uh, in 2018 is more similar to TAR2 in the past than to Poznan. Which makes also sense if you look at that just visually. Um, and the last group, is about multiple uh, values outcome. Uh, so here, I just show you this, the simplest one. So basically, I just calculated or show you the, the, the histogram of the differences. But we can think of many others. So me a lot of methods I showed you before, we can calculate, for example, few landscape metrics, and then we'll have also a vector of values. Or we can calculate something on multiple scales. So this is what uh, the way wise, uh, wiser package uh, do basically calculates different metrics on different scales, and then we have a vector of values instead of one value. Uh, for categorical raster, we can have the uh, contingency table, or there are other met methods that we can we can use. We can also have some uh, special signatures that we can compare. So you know already some methods. You've seen how I classify them. You've seen uh, some tools that we uh, I, I use. So. The first thing that I wanted to show you uh, now is we can extend it. So I just showed one moment in time to another moment in time or one moment in time to another place in one moment in time. But we can extend that to multidimensional data. So um, there are a few ideas, simple ideas. We can do a pairwise comparison. So we can just compare each time step to, uh, so let's say January to January, February to February, and so on. Or we can compress time series to one value, or uh, like doing PCA and just taking the first principal component and then just compare one value. Or we can use some kind of more complex signature. So we can calculate multiple value for one moment in time, multiple value for another moment in time, and then use some dissimilarity measure to, to compare that. Going back to, to the to tools, because this is a, a software conference, so let's, let's talk about tools. So what, what, I, what I've seen working on this paper and on this talk. Um, first of all, as you've seen, we've got a lot of packages, a lot of tools that allows us to do that. 
So uh, already a lot of things are implemented, but as you uh, see on the slide, not all of them. So there are some methods that are not implemented or um, sometimes they are implemented but not for spatial data and if you have spatial data you need to adjust your code and, and play with it for some time. Also, the, the, the whole efforts are rather fragmented, which makes sense, I, 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 I think, because people from different fields want to compare spatial patterns. So they develop their own tools, they develop their own methods, and often they do not talk with, to each other. So uh, if you want to calculate uh, five methods, you need to no, learn five tools, which is not, probably not, not the best. Um, not, also, not all of those, pack, those packages are on the official repository on, on CRAN, and some have very minimal uh, documentation. So I needed to spend some time to, uh, to, go, to, to go to the source code or to examples and to maybe play with that to, to just calculate one value. Um, and in general, I also think that there is a need for more tutorials, more uh, documentation, and, and, and we need to uh, improve on that. When it comes to the method selection, so going back to the methodology, um, there is probably an unlimited range of methods that we can uh, have, but we need to look at the, those different problems uh, before working on that. Gladly, gladly, now we, as you've seen, we already have tools. So now we can actually maybe calculate a few metrics and like look at what their properties in case of our area and how we can, we can use that. Because what I discovered is that we don't have papers like comparing those methods. So there is a method A used in the field A, methods B used in the field B, and they are disconnected. So I think there is a, still a lack of like the systematic study of those methods, of their properties, of their pros and cons. Um, so, but with the tools I showed you today, it's, I think it's, there is a step forward that we can do. We can use those methods and, and apply them um, to real world cases and to compare them and look at their pros and cons. So just to sum up, this whole work wasn't, uh, would not be possible without the help of of several people I mentioned here. So I asked people on uh, Fosodon and so on about their ideas, about their, their knowledge, and they helped me tremendously. Um, but what I wanted to say is that we have tools uh, that you've seen already. And for this paper, I also prepared code examples. So if you go to the, my slide and to the code examples, you'll get two documents with the code, reproducible code showing how to apply all of those methods. So you can uh, quickly adjust that to your data, or maybe do, you can do this systematic study and tell me which method is the best. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Jakub. Um, maybe let's do it the other way around. Uh, everyone who has to go leave to the next talk, um, feel free to go and leave. And maybe there are questions in the room, though, for Jakub. If not, then I have one question um, regarding your summary. So uh, what would you recommend to the community if somebody wants to get started and wants to tap into the field of um, um, R and the field of um, offering packages and maybe also um, you know, aligning packages? What are like the practical steps you would say the first thing that needs to be done or what is that? for the person to learn how to do that or to um, maybe create new tools? Maybe to, to step in and um, help uh, foster the, the field of um, spatial comparison. Uh, yeah, so, spatial so, so, comparison. Uh, so the first step is just to go to the code examples and look at that and, and get familiar with the code. Because as I said, different methods have different, and different tools have different assumptions, different uh, parameters. And, and then you, you need to think about the way of how the systematic study can be done. Because I think we can, in this case, I would just take a step back from the software and just think theoretically. Like how we can actually, uh, what are the cases that we can use to, to do that? And I, I still don't have 
complete idea what's the best here, mm -hmm. how to do that. But I would take the step back, I'll probably just take a piece of paper and start drawing to think about what can be, uh, what kind of data sets we need, what kind of types of data we, we need. And, but at the same time, uh, as always, start small. So start maybe, do, do not jump in categorical and continuous and, and all of those. Just start maybe in the, one of the uh, subset of those uh, methods I showed today and build from that uh, up. And as, I, as always, I think that the good advice is to just work in the open. So if you work in the open, show your work to other people and they will help you, as you can see here, um, I, I, yeah, this, this presentation would be, would be probably 10 times worse with most people. And maybe tag you on GitHub in the process. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Jakob. Thank you.